the, what about all the questions before about this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just going to repeat it, so we can just point it out from Rashi that we mentioned yesterday that when the Gemara sa- asks, why don't we derive from Yecheskel? So I was learning it that the Gemara is asking, why don't we derive from Yecheskel that there's going to be a resurrection? In the same way, Yecheskel revived the dead in the Valley of Dura, as we described yesterday. So Rashi writes that it's, and, and I pointed out from that, that it would seem like the Gemara has a specific author who's going with this version that, that the story of Yecheskel was a mushal, and that's why it doesn't include it in his list of proofs and citations that the resurrection. But Rashi writes that this uh, proof text is cited specifically for the issue about what happens to those who revive after the revival. The Gemara earlier said that after the revival they, serve, they, they never die, and the Gemara described how they're raised up while Hashem reorganizes the world, that they survive that reorganizing, as we explained earlier in the week. So Rashi is saying, one second, that this proof text is to prove that even after the revival, they go back to, to death, just like those who revived at the valley, that they raised up and went back to death. And there the Gemara says that it's only a parable according to that opinion. Yeah? But there's something I don't understand about that. The world, the afterworld, supposed to be better than this world. Yeah. So we go up there when we pass away. And we come back down. And we go to a beautiful world, and then we come back down to this world. So this cites that exact fact as proof. And then we go back up? No. Well, that's according to Rambam. According to Rambam, we do. Uh, but even so, so this uses that fact, the fact that we go up to heaven and then we come back down. Well, furthermore, think of the fact that, let's say, someone like Moshe Rabbeinu, he's been in heaven for how many years? A thousand, few thousand years? And the Gemara declares that even in heaven, the Sadiq can climb higher and higher and higher and higher, and then he's forced to come back down to a body. Even if you're going to go with the Rambam's version, that coming down to the body is temporary. It would seem to be torture. And thus, Hasidus proves from this very fact that the divine revelation that's to be experienced here in this physical world, the physical body, must be greater than all the world to come. Otherwise, why would God bother the Neshama to come back down? For exactly that reason. And just let this explain at length exactly how that is. Now, it's not just the increase in divine revelation, but it's a quantum leap in divine revelation going from uh, divine revelations within the divine system, going to going to the essence, all kinds of explanations. But that's, that's correct. That's a good question. But of course, the realm holds differently. That's correct. So even in the Rambam, even for temporarily coming down, would be torture to Neshama. No, he holds, no, he has not torture. He says that the, the, uh, the opportunity not to the mitzvah you have a chance to perform. Like Which itself could be painful for Neshama, if it's no, no, enjoying no, such no, things. No, the mitzvah I don't see it as a contradiction. Yeah. In other words, even if the Rambam is saying that you come back down because you have to do certain mitzvahs, yeah. Chassidus explains that, the, that the, the, the revelation that's experienced at the resurrection is the revelation of the essential connection created by a mitzvah in the physical world specifically. So all the divine revelations that a person has in the world to come in the afterlife are all enjoyments of the knowledge of God. But because you're in heaven and you're, you're essentially still a created being, you cannot reach the essence of the knowledge of God. The only way to reach the essence of God himself is through a mitzvah. And thus coming back down to do a mitzvah is fulfilling even for one who has been in heaven for all that time. So I don't see what the Rambam is saying as a contradiction here. And it, it, it's, it, even if you're not going to follow the Rambam specifically in this issue, I think this explanation still matches. Mm-hmm, but others explain it as more simple, just to simply attend to the mitzvahs and also be here with his family. And to see the no, I understand that, but that, 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 the more, the more that alone, even, even, that, no, even that alone, one could still raise the objection that if you ask the Neshama himself, He's basking in the glory of God's divine wisdom for a few thousand years. Does he want to go away from that for, for, yes, a, for a physical body? The same question is raised at, at birth at, at, in our time. And we did, we say, so Bakar it's, 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 it's correct. And we say, Bakar it's against your will you're born, which means the Neshama does not want to be born again, unless there's something here that he doesn't have up there. That's right. And that's what the point Chassidus is making. Yeah, that's that that's whatever he's having here, it here it must be deeper than what he's getting the up there. The okay. I think it's important to keep in mind, following Alan's question, we talk about the resurrection. Yeah. It's like, okay, you go up there, but then you come back here. And it's like life is normal. It's not 
life as before. It's not like it's a whole different. Okay, what I'm saying, yeah. You know, Michael goes up. Michael comes down. Michael carries on with his life as before. No, no, it's not the same situation. Now it's the whole world is filled with the knowledge of God. That's correct. It's a whole different rea- uh, um, That's right. cosmic or the re- reality that you existential co- right. cosmic so existential like, change. Back to that. That's correct. The, which the, is the that's doing of a mitzvah is different. Everything, everything is different. That's correct. So. Which is why Chassidus is saying that when you come back down here, there's an essential connection to God that you don't have in the world to come. In the life after death, which is why the Hashem is. You have that such connection. Even, when you come back, now, even even now, now, now you don't experience it. Then it's a whole different. Now you don't experience it. Of, of connection. Yeah. Yeah. Now you don't experience that connection. When you come back down, you will experience that connection, yeah. and that connection experience right. when you come back down right. is greater than all the world to come. Uh, to quote the Mishnah, yeah, exactly. the Mishnah which says it's, uh, it's greater one moment of good deeds and tshuva down here than all the world to come. Mm-hmm. Now you don't experience it. When Mashiach comes, you will experience it, which means it's worthwhile to to give up whatever you're getting up there to come back down and experience what it means to make a connection to Hashem in the physical body. That's what I'm saying. Well, so this explains doesn't doesn't contradict necessarily the Rambam either. Like why would you want to come down for sickness again and death and sickness? But that doesn't that doesn't exist anymore. Then, then you're right. Like, okay, let's come back to the Gemara. But no, but according to one piece, is it death anymore? Right. That's, that's the point he's making. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's the point he's making. Was actually, I came across this in Rashi and then. Okay, final word. Yeah, that what Rashi explains when the Midrash tell him, the Pasukur Rachum we have in the davening for Mara, is that at Tchias Amazing we come back with the soul but not the Yitzara. That that. that there is a way of looking at it. Yeah, well, obviously. That's the whole point. No, but it's not. It's, 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 yeah, no, no, 100%. But, 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 but that's the whole point. Yeah. Okay. So we'll let's go back to the Gemara here. The five different events. Okay, so we mentioned yesterday. We mentioned yesterday. Yeah, yeah. You can go and back. We mentioned like this. The Gemara mentioned yesterday. Nexus. With respect to the resurrection of Ezekiel at the Valley of Dry Bones. So, first, the Gemara mentioned two opinions. One opinion which said that it was literal. And that literal event was a prophecy for the future that the Gemara, that the Pasuk says clearly. The Pasuk, God tells Moshe, God tells Yechezkel, these bones are like the entirety of the Jewish people who have lost their hope. And watch, you're going to revive them. And likewise, the Jews will be re- restored from their exile. And so the one who says it's a literal event can say that this also has its bearing on or as a kind of prophecy for the resurrection in the future time. However, there's another view, of Yehuda, which is Be'emes Marshal Haya. In truth, it was only a, a parable. In brackets, for a second, the Gemara there says, first says that Yehuda said, Emes Marshal. Truth, parable, as if it's both. The Gemara raises how they seem contradictory, and the Gemara said that Be'emes Marshal. In truth, it's a, it's a parable. That little exchange also requires explanation, but I don't have anything fully yet in that, so I'm going to leave it alone. So that's one view, that it's a parable. Then when the Gemara asked, when the Gemara uh, went to analyze the view of the one who said it's a literal story, where Yechezkel revived those who, who, who were the dry bones that were in this valley, the Gemara asked, who were they? Who were these people? The Gemara gave five, five different opinions. The children of Ephraim who escaped Egypt early, miscalculating when the end of days will be, God gave a time when, machi- when, when, the, res- when uh, the exodus will happen and they miscalculated. They calculated from the day that the promise was made whereas they should have calculated from the birth of Yitzchak as Rashi explains for us. So they left. They tried escaping Egypt and they were killed. One opinion. The other one is it's those who um, it's those who didn't, don't believe in didn't believe in the resurrection. They lost hope and they didn't believe in the resurrection. Number two. Number three is the ones who lack lachluchiyas shel mitzvah. They lacked um, joy, excitement, enthusiasm, literally wetness. They lacked life in their mitzvahs. They did what they had to, but they did it dryly. So without say that no mitzvah well, they just like the whole thing is like, 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 like uh, yeah. It's not the simple meaning of the Gemara. Simple meaning of the Gemara is lachluchiyas shel mitzvah. If they had mitzvah, they lacked lachluchiyas, okay. lacked life. Even if, even though the, the depth of the literal mitzvah don't have, they have no mitzvah bechlal. That's one interpretation. Yeah, yeah. That's it, but the literal Gemara doesn't go that way. Simple reading of the Gemara does not go that way. Doesn't say, it could just say she'en by mitzvahs. doesn't say no, that. No, even like there's something that a person needs to connect with the mitzvah, even if they don't have. Okay. It's so far removed. It's so number, th- number three. Number four was it was those who, Yechezkel says when he came back to, um, when he came back to, uh, to, to see the temple in its ruin, they saw, he saw graffiti, pictures of all kinds of impure animals. Yeah. On, on the wall. Marsha mentioned just the reason why he mentions Kashim Ramas and have no bones. They, they were totally withered. Yeah. Well, the person's a bone. So, but he, they, 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 they were. They, so they, that's they, number four. They, 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 they people made graffiti. And number five is those in the Valley of Dura 
who were those in the Valley of Dura. Um, we described yesterday how there were Jewish, it seems like Jewish men, who when the Jews were exiled from, they were on the march from Israel to Babylonia during the exile. Young men who were showing off their physique to the Kutiyite, right? The Kuch, Kazdi. The Kazdim. Kazdiite yeah. women. Yeah. And the Kazdiite women were uh, very excited about these good-looking young men. And the Nebuchadnezzar had them killed before making their husbands jealous. Killed and then trampled upon so that they don't even look good even in their death. So those are the five options. Rabbi Yochan, for example, he wanted to show how beauty is, like shines. Yeah. So this is, this is the five options for who they were. What, what, what's the, the point of the graffiti with the bones? What's the, <coughs> the link? I'm not sure what you're asking. One of the Gemara saying that one of the people, one of the opinions as to who the people were in the val- Valley of Death that were revived were specifically those people who, in desecrating the temple, made graffiti in the temple. That's it. Walls, Very simple. Example, yeah, but then the reason why I mentioned the scratching must be insects, so that's the point. Okay, it's so let, 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 let's... An analogy with... I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want to run out of time, so let's, yeah. let's continue here. We'll go after this. So, the, we, we suggested yesterday that we're going to explain oh, what's the connection between these five different things, and specifically, these five different op- options as to who the people who died and were thus revived by Echeskel, all of those five serve as a metaphor for the resurrection. Whereas a prophecy, for the, not, not, not metaphor, sorry, the story was literal, and they are a prophecy for the resurrection. That's what the Gemara tells us. So which means these five people, these five different options, are all indicative of mistakes that are a result in the opposite of the resurrection. And thus the resurrection is like their, um, their tikkun, their, their fixing, their rectification. Right? So as we described uh, earlier in the Gemara, what's the essence of the resurrection? You are all connected to Hashem. True life, as we described, is, right, we, we described this before, that essentially sin is, equals death. Literally, sin, death started with sin, the golden calf. And life, in other words, if, uh, if the world, the natural world, if we're made in complete, perfect sync with Hashem, should never die. Like Adam Rishon. Like, like Adam Rishon in the Garden of Eden. No, as soon as there's a break in that relationship between the world and, uh, and God, that's when death starts to happen because you're lacking true life, which is connection to Hashem, and thus anything that doesn't have the eternal life only has temporary life and thus ends. So these five things, these five people displayed a certain element of not just a specific sin. All sin is, is essentially a disconnect from Hashem and thus a minor version of death, if you will. But specifically, these five people in their behavior demonstrated a direct uh, uh, antithesis to the idea of connection to Hashem as experienced in the resurrection of the dead at that time. How so? Number one, the first one is Ephraim, the children of Ephraim who left Egypt. Their mistake was, it's all a little counterintuitive. But if you think about it, they displayed a very deep lack of faith in Hashem. They said, they came to the conclusion that the, that the exile must be over. So they started marching out. What should have they done? Moshe. Waited for Hashem. Or for Moshe. I don't know if Moshe was around yet, but be certainly be wait for Hashem to send Moshe. Yeah. Yeah. Wait for Hashem to send Moshe. Yeah. Or someone else. Yeah, be Whatever it is, but yeah. for Hashem's word. Yeah. In other words, while you're in exile, have faith that God knows what He's doing. You're waiting for Mashiach's coming, but while you're in exile, have faith that Hashem knows what He's doing. And if he's not here today, then, or, I don't want to put this the wrong way, because we are commanded to, to, to ask, we ask of Hashem daily in our prayer three times a day, multiple times for Mashiach to come. But in none of those, in other words, there, this comes along with a certain faith that, when I, that Hashem brings Mashiach when the time is, when, when he's so ordained. It, but we can't act on it as if Mashiach has come yet. That's the difference. We, we, our prayers. we, we still have to. We still are required to yeah. do things to bring Mashiach's coming. Of course, yeah, bring. But to but bring to, and to hasten his to hasten his arrival. Mm-hmm. To hasten his arrival, but uh, but uh, I guess that's the right word. Acting as if Mashiach is here already yeah. because you decided he has to be here. Yeah, that's a dangerous thing. You know, that, that thing. That's the first dangerous thing. It's a false messiah. Exactly. So and and it displays a lack of trust in Hashem. They decided it's over, so they're marching out. Well, they still trust Hashem, but to me, the, the, the failures 
using their own uh, human logic to try to uh, predict. They're not the trusting case. Hashem. If they trusted Hashem, they would know that when we, the Hashem said He's going to come out, He'll take us out. No, to, their, to their mind, they, th- they thought 400 years, it's in the, it's in the Torah. It's it's correct, but they didn't wait for Hashem to take them out. They marched out. Well, they thought they had to do it themselves. They still believe in Hashem. That's the point. Yeah. But that's that's a lack of. They believed in Hashem, yeah. but it's a lack of trust that He's going to do it. That He's going to do it right. No, well, their mind it already happened. That's the point. That's it the, didn't. They were stuck in Egypt. No, but no, but their their mind. This is like the okay. Was there, so Fine. On, yeah. The, the next step is. They trusted Hashem too. Sorry. They thought Hashem would help. What say? It's, it's a dangerous. It's a dangerous conclusion because I mean they trusted in Hashem in, in Europe in nineteen thirties too, when they probably put it. They trusted Mashiach would come, and they got caught. So. I mean they. I, I don't think anyway just we can yeah, yeah, yeah I have to think about that it's, it's, I need to think about that it's I, just, just saying, it's just, I, I have the kernel in my head I have to uh, articulate it but I, I don't think indicative in here is the, is the notion that a person is not supposed to try to save himself I don't think that that's what this is. Yeah, even in Egypt, the even yes. even in Egypt, you had the children of Levi who were not under under um, under uh, the bondage, and maybe others could have been the same. I don't know. I'm just putting this out there. I, I'm thinking more of uh, of. A delicate thing. I'm, I'm thinking more of of someone who feels like he's supposed to build a temple. Take that, that kind of like thing. Go to holy war, for example, to conquer the, the, the capital yeah, to of conquer Israel, the, so, the some, something that's like thing, that. That's, 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 that's what I'm thinking of. Someone who, yeah, something along those lines. Who has to go against the oath, like the fire to start fighting against yeah. the nation? Yeah, going on mass. Yeah, exactly. Going on mass. Even, going up with force. Doesn't matter how many you're going, but I think that's I think that's what the, the problem here is: saving going. yourself. First Sorry. At any rate, okay. That's number one. What's the next one? Sorry. Oh, did, did you we'll leave everybody to their imagination, but I guess I have. Let's, let's move on. That, that's a different that's topic of discussion. Yeah, yeah. Totally discussion. I, I, I was certainly hinting at that, but we're going to leave yes, it at I, that. I, I kind of you picked that. up on it. Yes. Okay, good. Those are the Olsen and Mark and Zubas, and different ways to interpret them, but that's another topic I agree completely. <laughs> okay. Bye, <Jim>. Yeah. <laughs> the next thing is. The next, the next on the item well, is. Well, we have a chance to both be the next of the five things. The next of the five. The next of the five options were. Um, those who had completely lost their hope. So you have on the one hand, the one extreme, you have those who say, uh, look, I have to sit around and wait for Hashem to take me out of Egypt. I'm making this messianic state myself. That's one extreme. The other extreme is people who say, ah, it's fine where we are, leave it alone, we have no hope. Those are the first two options. You have two extremes. The first ones are the children of Ephraim who say, you sit around wait for Mashiach, for, for Mashiach to come, forget about that. I'm going to make my own Mashiach reality. I'm marching out. One mistake. The other extreme is the one who says, there's no hope, forget about it. You're building a messianic reality. Pfft. Completely assimilate, leave it alone. It's fine, no hope, all done. It's interesting that Both of these extremes are no good. The Mishnah said these people actually should lose their participation. Hashem has Rachman. He's with me, Hashem has Rachman. He's waiting to Certainly lose. true. Yeah, wow. Correct, they are revived, even though the Mishnah said earlier that these are the people who don't people get Mashiach. Yes, but Hashem's okay. It's, we yes. have a good, that's the remnant of the future as well. cognizant of God's promise to Abraham. Exactly. No, Who? Ephraim. Yeah. Yeah, they, yes, they were. They, they were, they were believers. But they, 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 they believe. They be, ex- they, I, mean, I know, but I'm, I think there's something deeper than just the calculation. I will, I will redeem you. Yes, yeah, I, no, but yeah. I'm making the point that there's, there's, a, there's a specific. There's, there's a specific. I'm taking it deeper than just a miscalculation. The miscalculation isn't simply they miscalculated the dates and they got it wrong. So that, it's it's not that they got it wrong. That wasn't. The mi- they weren't being punished because they got the mistake because they got it wrong. That's not why they were being punished. They were being mispunished because they took action. Right. A person can think that Mashiach should come now. And that's fine. And you should go to Hashem and say, according to all calculations, Mashiach should come now. Why is it Mashiach here? That's different than I'm going and building my messianic world. The mistake was not in the miscalculation. The mistake was taking action on it. I make, make that clear. Number, the other mis- extreme is the one who says, forget calculations, forget all of it, leave it alone. So two extremes. One extreme who says, I'm building my own messianic reality, no good. And the other extreme, the one who says, forget about it, assimilate, leave it alone, where it's not, it's not happening. Both of these extremes are no good. And then you have the, th- the third one, which is mitzvahs that are, 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 are dry. Dry mitzvahs, lacking lachluchas, lacking... Uh... So th- you'll remember from the previous Gemara, we talked about the God giving the Jews wings that they could fly above the world as being rearranged. And the Rebbe told us that the wings, 
are love and fear of Hashem. Mitzvah is done with love and fear of Hashem. Because right? Tanya talks about how the, love, how the wings are what raise the mitzvah up. So, <clears throat> so in, in kind of connection to that, a person doing a mitzvah without love and fear of Hashem is someone who's doing a mitzvah would miss the whole point. What's the point of a mitzvah at its essential state? Connect to Hashem. What's he doing in his mitzvah? It's lacking joy because he's... His grandfather did it before him, and his great grandfather did it before him. So he's doing it also. He's doing it out of routine. Perfunctory act. Uh, it's doing, it. Sorry. I like that word. Beautiful. Yeah. So it's it's it's, it's so in a way he's even worse than the previous two. The previous two at least are annoyed by exile. One says, "I'm so annoyed. I'm not waiting around for God. I'm doing it myself." The other one says, "We've been in exile for so long. You know what? Forget this whole Judaism thing. Leave it alone." And the third guy says, whatever, it doesn't matter. Keep on going, do it. We did it last year, we'll do it again. What's the difference? He's completely, fully comfortable in his world, has no lach luchi, has no passion or excitement. He wants to build a better world. He wants to connect to Hashem. He wants to do something. Eh, just, just go along, go along, go along. In a way, it's almost worse than the previous two. Because he's not even upset about exile. He's just... Apathy, yeah. Yeah, apathy, completely apathetic, and just right. floating yeah. along. Like an atheist and yeah. agnostic. The mitzvahs don't hurt me, so I'm going to do mitzvahs. If I finished, I'll keep on going. Completely benign. Completely apathetic. Terrible state of being. Number three. And then the fourth one, the next one, are those who have are doing graffiti on the temple. It was the fourth option, of the fourth opinion as to who the people who died in the Valley, no, valley of bone, valley Dry Bones and were thus revived. Those are making graffiti. So this is people who take a step further. The first... The first crowd says, I'm not waiting for God to do it myself. The second crowd says, it's going on for so long, just give up on God. The third one says, God, Shmod, who cares? You keep on going, doing whatever you have to do, whatever, do mitzvahs and them. And the fourth one comes and ridicules it. Ridicules it. And says, we've been in exile for so long, and God's not doing anything. I'm, not, I'm certainly not taking action. I'm not, I'm not just going to drop the whole thing. I'm not keep on going. I'm going to go and ridicule it. I'm going to like, so, so to speak, get back at God for what he's doing. It's even further. A rebellion. A rebellion. And then the fifth one is, is, is almost the worst of them all. Because all the previous ones all agree who, on who God is. Either they say, we're going to take our own action, or they say, we're going to, we're, we're, you know, Maybe God's supposed to do this Mashiach thing, but I'm giving up on it. Or they say, yeah, there's a God, I'm doing Torah Mitzvah, you know, just completely apathetic. And the fourth one is rebelling. The fifth level replaced the God. They've, took it, they, they've made materialism into their God. These are the ones who are showing off their physique uh, to, to the Kazdate women as they're being kicked out. So they've metaphorically replaced, replaced God and said, we're not, not only are we not going to fight God, as it were, by making graffiti, and not only to be apathetic, we're actually going to completely replace him. Instead of servicing him, we're now going to worship our own physical, physical our, our own physical, physical bodies and our own physique and pure our own pure it's, it's 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 literally what the Greeks were doing. Exactly. They 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 completely they worshipped their own bodies, were worshipped their own images, and that's what these guys are doing. Not only are we going to ignore God, not only are we going to fight God, we're completely we're replacing. Yeah, we have a whole new. That's right. Yeah. And in, in a way, you could think about it, it's actually even in stages. Yeah. It, it could be even in stages of like one person can go through all of this. Or generations. Yeah. One person or generations can start off by saying, you know, I'm going to build my own messianic era. The other generation saying, <laughs> try it didn't work. Yeah, if it tried, didn't work, forget about the whole thing. Yeah. The next one being just completely apathetic, not even caring. The next one saying, you know, this is one for so long, I want to rebel. And then the fifth one saying, I'm completely. Completely, uh, um, well, hedonist, yes, completely, completely replacing it. I'm going to service myself uh, almost, almost nihilistically, and uh, in a way. It's almost like it's serious that you have a certain parallel history in the 19th, 20th century. I was just decades. going to say that the decades of the last, the last five decades, America, the last, the last five decades, kind of, kind of follows that. That's right. That's right. right. You have, you have the the. 
You have to think about how this goes out. You had you had um, people who wanted to make the like a mess. Turn turn turn. Uh, who, who firmly believed that they were building the the uh, the town on the on the what's the expression? Top of the hill. Yeah, the town of the shining. What's shining light on the hill? We're creating the messianic era here in here in <laughs> here in the states. That's right. Right. Uh, USA, USA. From there you go to a generation that doesn't. The generation that doesn't care at all. Just assimilates. This completely assimilates. The next generation. What, well, they no, they they deny the yeah, and then and then, then, then they leave in the right, con- 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 completely assimilating. Yeah. The next one being, um, what was the next one? Going through the motions. Yeah, going the, uh, going through the motion, maintaining. Yeah. Doing. Then, the you re- then you have the then you have the rebellion. Rebellion. And then now, you, now we're living yeah, in a state where we're, we're just don't care. So uh, uh, servicing our own pleasures, and yeah. we've completely replaced God with it. It's like when you get to when you get atheism long enough, you have to find a new God to replace it with. And you have all kinds of new gods that we've created in Hollywood, and, and, and good looks, and this and that, yeah. and all kinds of things. Look at the ones who took action on their own when they were supposed to cross the Jordan to go into Israel, and God said, "Wait, wait, wait." And then that the ones who messed up by the uh, by the the, the, the spies who messed up who decided that they want to go up and they yeah, they're appealing, yes, that's they right. similar thing. Yeah. All right, have a wonderful day and a good Shabbos, and uh, so you get to get an outline. You can go have fun with it if you will.